Senator Menendez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, for holding the hearing and for your continuing leadership in the question of human trafficking. I, I, I truly appreciate it, and thank you both for, for your service. Uh, uh, Ambassador Coppitz, let me ask you simply yes or no. Would you uh, agree that Malaysia has a very significant number of trafficking victims? Yes. And uh, also, yes or no, do you believe that the number of trafficking victims in Malaysia is significantly increasing? That is hard to determine. Isn't it numerically possible to determine? I believe that human trafficking is a hidden crime. <clears throat> and it's very hard to get accurate data as to whether the problem is increasing or not, or whether we are just getting better, government officials are just getting better at detecting it. NGOs are getting better at assisting victims and reporting that. Well, the TVPA defines countries that should be included on the Tier 2 watch list as countries that otherwise meet the Tier 2 definition. But where one, the absolute number of victims is very significant or significantly increasing, there's a failure to provide evidence of increasing efforts to combat trafficking, and or three, the determination that a country is making significant efforts based on commitments by the country to take future action. And this year's report seems to have ignored that first group, countries where the absolute number of victims is very significant or significantly increasing, and instead made the distinction between tier two and a tier two watch list solely on the second and third categories. So, Given that you agree that Malaysia has a very significant number of trafficking victims, why did the State Department ignore that part of the legal requirement when determining Malaysia's tier ranking? Senator, I can assure you we did not ignore that part of the um, minimum standards and the tier requirements. Those factors, there are four minimum standards, 12 indicia, and the three factors you just enumerated as in determining the rank of a country between tier two Tier 2 watch list and Tier 3 were all considered with respect to Malaysia. Uh, but there's no question that they have a very significant number. So it seems to me that uh, my understanding is that you had to meet all of these elements. Are they weighted? Um, there are many factors that go into it, and factors can point in different directions. So what we do at the State Department is sit down and discuss those facts fill in any gaps in information we have, um, consult with NGOs and citizens who are invited to share information. I know individuals um, on the Hill share information that they receive as well. And all of these different factors are considered. Again, some may point in different directions. They are weighed and a final result is made. Well, uh, factors that point in different directions can be an excuse. Let me ask you this. Uh, you uh, testified last year before the committee, and I quote, Malaysia stayed on the tier two watch list because it has a serious human trafficking problem and it did not make overall increasing efforts. So to me, that statement reflects the correct interpretation of the law and that both the scale of the problem and the efforts of government must be considered when determining tier two watch list status. It seems to me that you abandoned that interpretation for this year's report. Um, I, I'm wondering what, uh, you know, the notion that increased efforts uh, sub, you know, subjectively defined are enough to remove a country from the watch list seems to be a newly created standard that uh, was not noted in the report in past years. Senator, we don't rely on just one standard, and I can say that we did not abandon the minimum standards in making the evaluation. Uh, we looked at, and, and you missed a, a bit of my conversation with Senator Cardin, the increases um, in the number of trafficking investigations. They quadrupled from 158 to 581. The number of trafficking convictions increased from 7 to 35. That number is still woefully low given the scope of the problem, but they were significant efforts given the efforts in the previous year. We will continue to look at the numbers of prosecutions, investigations, and convictions. Is criminalization the forced labor requirement to meet the minimum standards of the law? It is certainly something that is looked at to see whether the law is comprehensive in addressing all forms looked of trafficking. It's not a minimum standard of the law? You it interpret it as just looking at it? No, Senator. If you look at that and the, a country does not criminalize all forms of forced labor, I submit to you that they would never be a tier one country. Well, Cuba was granted a waiver from an otherwise automatic downgrade to tier three because the government of Cuba has devoted resources to some written plan, if implemented. But the law has not changed. They do not criminalize forced labor. And that is something that we continue to raise with the government of Cuba and something that is addressed in but their written I, plan. But how do they deserve a waiver? 
the waiver looks at the written plan to make sure that that plan would Do we have access to that written plan? The written plan is submitted by governments to the State Department, and we believe it would be chilling to share that plan submitted by a foreign government. <laughs> so it would be chilling to share a plan that is the basis of a, a statutorily mandated report and for which uh, we could not make a judgment without knowing whether that plan is significant enough to give a country like Cuba, for that fact, any other country similarly situated, a waiver. That's ridiculous. That is beyond, beyond the whole notion that in order not to freeze the deliberative process internally within the State Department as it relates to these rankings, that in fact we shouldn't have access to a report that a government gets a waiver on. I was chairman, I, this is why reform of uh, the existing legislation is so important. If I may, one, one last question, uh, uh, Ambassador Sullivan, I mean, Secretary Sullivan. Uh, I re Reuters report on June 23rd claims that Secretary Tillerson overruled his staff assessments on the use of child soldiers in Iraq and Myanmar and removed them from the Child uh, Soldiers Prevention Act. It goes on to say that he also rejected a staff proposal to add Afghanistan to that list. Uh, and I'd ask consent that the Reuters article be entered into the record, Mr. Chairman. Is that account accurate? Well, uh, Senator, the Secretary uh, took the facts that were presented to him uh, through the TIP report uh, process, through uh, the, uh, the process that generated the uh, recommendations to him, applied the legal standard in his judgment to the facts that were, uh, were presented and reached his determination with respect to those three cases. So the, uh, and I'm happy to, di to discuss each of those three, Burma, Afghanistan, and, uh, and Iraq, but it was his judgment, uh, his judgment of applying the legal standards to the facts that led to, uh, to the- well, I'd be very interested in understanding why he rejected the advice of uh, State Department experts. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I? Uh, Go ahead. Uh, just two points on that. Um, we are, uh, the secretary uh, for each of these determinations, it makes his own independent judgment. I'd be happy to brief you on, on this issue, as well as on the issue you raised previously with Ambassador Coppage on Cuba, uh, with respect to uh, our determinations with respect to Cuba, the facts there, as well going forward on our engagement with Cuba, both law enforcement and migration issues, and with respect to trafficking in persons, and provide you with information, if not the plan that Susan described, sufficient information so that you understand what our position is with respect to Cuba. Well, I won't belabor it because the chairman has been, uh, even though there's no other members present, but the chairman's been very gracious with the time. I'll just simply say, first of all, I'd like an answer for the record in writing, and I'd be happy to take your briefing as well. But let me just say, this answer that we can't even see a report that has nothing to do with the deliberations uh, to determine whether a country should get a waiver or not, that, that is beyond the scope. That, is, From my perspective, it's beyond the scope and not acceptable. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Senator Chairman. I have one other question that I didn't get to, but let me ask you this. Uh, Ambassador, how many rankings could not be decided between you and other senior State Department officials and therefore had to be elevated to the secretary? So as, as you know, Senator, we sit down at the working level and, and reach consensus recommendations in the majority of cases. This year, five were elevated. And in those instances, was there ever an occasion where factors not related to the government's efforts to combat trafficking came up in the discussion of a country's ranking? Not that I'm aware of, not, not in the discussions that I participated in. I would like to, to back up a bit to... You know, if, I, if I may, because on my time, <laughs> I, I don't want to... Uh, let, let me... Uh, in those instances, did you consider any actions that took place outside the reporting period? No. Uh, Mr. Secretary, one last question to you. In the context of those that were elevated to the secretary, uh, was there any occasion where factors not related to the government's efforts to combat trafficking come up in the discussion about a country's ranking? None. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. So, for example, in China's case, it was purely what they did as it relates to uh, the lack of their standards meeting under the Trafficking in Persons Act. Exactly. The, the, the secretary applied the statutory uh, standards to the facts. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.